All the way back in October of 2022, I posted a video where I was basically getting rid of my Google Nest cameras and replacing them with a whole bunch of Wise camera V3s and a whole bunch of SD cards to see if I could effectively go subscription free and how well that would work. Since then, I have added a whole bunch more Wise products to my smart home. And in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you basically a long-term review of as many of these things as I can. Basically give you an idea of what it's like to have just a whole bunch of wise products all inside that app and also linking in with Google Home and routines and things like that. How has this worked for me since October of 2022? And to do this, I'm going to just basically be working off of the Wise app. I'm just capturing this with my computer, but this is the Wise app on my Pixel Fold. And you can see here, like I said, I have quite a few products to quickly go over. Let's first start off, though, with the cameras. As you can see, I have one, two, three, four outdoor cameras. And I'm not going to show you the indoor ones, but let me count them really quickly. There are an additional six indoor cameras. So I have 10 total Wise V3 cameras. And the only real problems that I've had with them have been effectively solved. So one of them, I guess, was solved by the fact that I replaced it. I had a camera that was in my hallway, just sort of inexplicably die. It would just disconnect, would not ever reconnect. And I think what was actually happening was the cable on the back, if I messed around with it, it would turn back on and it would work for a while. I think something had like physically failed. So that's a bit of a bummer. I replaced it and everything has been fine since then. The other problem was that sometimes with this many cameras, when I would actually load this thing up, you can see now whenever I click on this group, they fire up pretty quickly, right? Boom, boom, boom. These are all live now. That's pretty darn quick, but I was having some issues where sometimes it would take a really long time and sometimes they just would never load and I would have to actually swipe up and hold and close the application and then that would allow it to start working again. Once I opened it back up, I would go back in and things would load. Now that does still happen every once in a while, but it doesn't happen very often. Now, as you can see, it is very quick. How did I solve that? Well, I just improved my home router. I had some of these things spread out over really large distances, like this camera in particular, you can see it is all the way at the other far end of the yard and it is still connecting really well. How is that happening? Well, it's because if you go into device info here, you can see I still have three bars. I just have a really high end mesh router system. If you're having these sorts of issues, that tends to be the problem. It's just a weak signal. The cameras are too far away. I installed a camera system wise with uh, in, in my mom's house actually. And TP-Link actually helped me out and sent me a, a really good mesh router system. And that solved the same problem for them. Now these cameras also claim to be waterproof as well as good down to minus four Fahrenheit. And as you can see, we are putting that to the test and this camera is still uh, fully functional as well as, as well as I should say another camera all the way down here at the end of the yard. I'm not going to walk all the way down there because we have like a foot of snow here in Knoxville this morning. But yeah, they're outside all the time in the cold, in the rain, and they've held up fine. Honestly, probably my biggest irritation with these cameras, and this is something that happens if you are playing back from the cloud or playing back from your SD card, is how big of a gap there is from the last live images to when you start viewing playback. So let's say right now it is 9.54 a.m. 33 seconds and something happens and I want to go view that playback. Let's click on view playback and... It's going to jump us back to 949, but let's go all the way to the most recent. We're at 953.38, so we are almost a full minute behind, or I guess about a full minute behind at that point. So if something just happens and you want to go to the playback and see what it is, you can go back and you're going to wait a full minute. That's, I know, going to be less annoying for some people than it is for people like me that might be impatient, but that is a little bit annoying. I do also wish when you were scrubbing through the video that it would be updating the image and showing a frame wherever you stop that because otherwise you don't know what you're looking for. You have to actually stop, let it load, and see if that's what you were looking for each time. With my old Nest cameras, 
you would be seeing like you're scrubbing through a video on YouTube where you were at. That makes finding something very difficult. You have to kind of look for like a little bit of movement, right? So like you can see here, those footsteps are gone. They're still gone. Okay, there's me stepping outside this morning. Okay, so I could kind of get close and then I got to use the 30 second forward or backwards to inch my way up and hope that I can get to where I am. You see what I mean though? You have to kind of get to what you're looking for in a more delicate manner. I wish it just would let me scrub through it and show previews. One more sort of slight irritation with these things is that sometimes the notifications are a little bit flaky still. So I don't pay for the subscription on these cameras minus one of them. I have 10, 10 cameras, I'm paying for the subscription on one, and it is my front door camera. And the reason for that is because if you go into these settings, you can actually have it detect specific things, person, pet, vehicle, and that's something that I like. And it will also get rid of that five minute buffer between recording events. Granted, I have an SD card in every one of my other cameras, which if I jump to another one, I can show you here, view playback, and all of this is, playing off of my SD card, which is very, very useful. And again, doesn't cost you a dime once you've got everything set up. But sometimes these notifications can be a little bit flaky. I'll give you a good example here. If I go to about two o'clock AM this morning, as I talk, you're gonna see something happen on the screen here. And it was in my detection zone. I would think that these, I believe coyotes, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe they're random German shepherds, big coyote, small German shepherds randomly roaming the neighborhood. I'm not exactly sure. Either way, you would think that something like that passing in front of a camera, an animal like that would have been picked up by the camera as a pet. I received no notifications and I don't have any settings that should have prevented that. There are just some occasional weird things like that. Now, my Nest cameras did the same thing, so I'm not gonna judge that too harshly. Overall, with the cameras themselves, I am pretty pleased. We're talking about a camera that, you know, here on Amazon is $35.98. Buy yourself, you know, a 32 gig SD card for, you know, less than $10. Like I said, pretty happy with how the cameras have done so far. They allow me to check on my dog, check on my property, no matter where I am. They load up quickly, even on mobile data, no issues there at all. After getting that improved mesh router system, it has been almost picture perfect. For the next item I've had for a little while, I have the Wise thermostat. And I really don't have a whole lot to say about this thing because it's just a thermostat. I have it programmed to certain temperatures at certain times. It does all of that exactly as you would expect it to. I also did add their little temperature sensors, which are scattered in various places throughout the house. And that will kind of help me. As you can see their studio sensor, 70 degrees, 70 degrees. I've had this thing for a good minute and the battery is still, you probably can't get that to focus, but the battery is still full. Um, it's going to last forever. Apparently everything I use it for works quite well. I will say that I don't have the location thing turned on where basically it knows if you're home or not. The primary reason for that is I work from home. So I'm here most of the time. There's no real reason to turn that on. So I haven't really tested that aspect of this application. There it is. Auto switch. You can see that's turned off because, you know, I just don't really have any good reason to use it. It reminds you when your filter needs to be changed. You can tell it, okay, I just changed it. And after, you know, so long, it'll tell you, hey, it's been a while. You should do that again. No real issues with the Wise thermostat. Not super expensive. And it does the job exactly as you would hope that it would. Another one that I don't really have a whole lot to say about, they've just been consistent and they just do their jobs are my outlets. I have them in this section here. It looks like there's a firmware upgrade actually on some of them. They do exactly what you would want them to do. I can demonstrate this right here. So logo sign uh, over my shoulder, turned off, turned back on. There you go, working just fine. How about my desk lamp? You should see me get a little bit darker. There you go. They do the job and what's cool is that they are integrated into Google Home. You sign into your Wise account in your Google Home application on Android and all of my routines are there. So when I tell you know the assistant good morning in the morning, it does the lights all the way that I want them to be. When I tell it good night, they all turn off and it happens very quickly, very consistently. No issues with any of these things dropping their connection. So really not sure what more I could possibly want from a smart outlet. And just like the cameras, $16 for a two pack. You can see I actually got a couple more of them here recently to add to my, my plethora of outlets. $16 right now for a two pack. 
not too bad. There are definitely cheaper options on the market. Some of these Chinese brand ones are ridiculously inexpensive, but I've had issues with them losing their connection. Got to unplug them and plug them back in. So far, so good with the wise version of these. No issues with them dropping their connection and no issues with them integrating with Google Home. If I jump into my Google Home app, you'll see that they are all sort of just sorted in here. I've added them to each room and they are in each room working exactly as you'd expect them to. And they work great through this. I will quickly mention that the cameras from Wise also will appear in your device. As you can see your front yard, front porch camera. If I click on it though, it does generally take a really, really long time to actually become viewable inside the Google Home app. So while it might be a cool idea to just have everything in that Home app, I wish that were something that this was better at. Unfortunately, it just doesn't work all that well because it takes so very long. On your favorites page, you can add cameras to that favorite page and it's supposed to work like this where they just instantly pop up and you can see all your different favorite cameras. Again, cool in theory. In practice for me, it just takes so long that I end up just not even using this. So moving on down the list to something that I used a lot for a while and I've actually been using less and less is the Wise robot vacuum. I actually picked this thing up from Walmart. I think it was like $150 or something like that. It was like half off or something in that ballpark. Absolutely like fantastic price. So I snagged this thing and it uses LiDAR, as you can see, to map out your house. You can have zones that you can tell, hey, don't vacuum there because there's something in the way. As you can see, there's the track of the last you know area that it vacuumed for me. And it does a pretty good job, but the primary reason that I'm using it less now than when I first got it is actually because I got a, a different dog, and this dog is an Australian Shepherd, and their fur that they shed is often very, very lightweight. So lightweight that, you know, sometimes just walking by and it'll become airborne. And unfortunately, this vacuum just does not do a great job of picking up, of dealing with that dog hair. So what often ends up happening is I'll take a broom and very lightly sweep up the floor and get these ridiculous piles of fur. And then I use a hand back to suck up that fur. And then maybe I'll run the vacuum after that. So that is definitely a little bit of a bummer. If you have a shedding dog, the Wise Robot Vacuum is not necessarily the best choice. I also have this kind of odd issue with the Wise Robot Vacuum where it would go back home to charge when it's done. It goes to its little dock and it gets up to it. It turns around and it backs into it. It's a little, you know, wireless connection, obviously, to charge. And it was doing this thing where it would get up against it and it would say it's charging and then it would just kind of keep pressing against it and it would start tipping the thing over and it would stop charging. I'm not sure what caused that, but my solution was to find a, an appropriately sized rock and slip that behind the little docking station between it and the wall to kind of make it so that it couldn't tip it over. And that has solved the problem for me. Again, I don't know how to account for why it's doing that, but it's been doing it and it's a little bit annoying. As you can see, I've had the suction level on strong the entire time trying to deal with that dog hair that it doesn't necessarily do a great job of. Here's the cleaning history. You can see how often I use it. You know, it's not nearly as much as it used to be, but still 16,000 square feet of cleaning history. I do still use it, you know, a fair amount. So looking at the bottom of this thing, you can see it's, it's held up pretty well, right? So here's the brush that you actually can quickly remove and clean. It does need to be cleaned up a little bit right now, but again, you know, with all this dog hair, it's hard to keep it clean. You basically have to do it after every single uh, time you've actually used it. Little side brush here that throws things in so that it can actually be sucked up. This will pop off relatively easy. This is held up pretty well, actually. Flipping this thing up here, you have your dust bin and all that stuff. This is how you empty the thing out. There's a filter. There's a filter in there. There's also this handy dandy tool for cleaning things out as well, for cleaning your brush, so forth and so on. You can hear that lovely voice that tells you what's going on. One weird thing is that sometimes when I pull out this dust bin, it doesn't call it a dust bin. It calls it like a two-in-one dust bin water tank or something like that, which tells me that they were at some point thinking about a mopping attachment for this vacuum or something like that that I don't think ever actually came. So for the robot vacuum, if you can get it for around the price I did, $150, it is an 
easy recommendation. It works really well. And if I could go back in time to where I did not have the long hair shedding dog rose uh, in the house, it worked really, really well. It's only in this circumstance, which I, I kind of question how many robot vacuums would really be able to handle her fur super well in general, that it does struggle a little bit. And it's made me kind of have to change my routine just a little bit. But I do love the fact that, I mean, I can be like out and about. And if, you know, maybe someone's coming over later that day or something like that, I can from my phone, open up this application and let the map load up here really quickly. And I can be like, okay, so like the living room, I think needed to be vacuum because there's a rug in there. Let's get the living room in the hallway and click on vacuum. And it's going to do that. And by the time I'm home, it has vacuumed those parts of the house for me. I wish it had some sort of way to like empty itself out, but that is a feature that tends to be reserved for much more expensive vacuums. Overall, Pretty solid robot vacuum. And the last thing I'm gonna talk about is the Wise Bathroom Scale. This is something that I got maybe six or eight months ago when I decided that I actually needed to lose a little bit of weight. I know most of you look at me and think, "Who? why would you need to lose weight? But I'll just say for me, I hit a number that I was no longer comfortable with and I just wasn't looking the way that I wanted to look anymore. So I ended up dropping about, I'm about 10 pounds is where I'm at now, which I think I'm at a pretty normal spot at the moment. So I got this scale to be able to kind of help me track that stuff. Now I'm not gonna go deeply into it because I just don't necessarily wanna show you the numbers because I know that I'm gonna get weird comments from people as soon as I do that stuff. But basically you get yourself set up and actually my wife has her own Wise account and therefore her own person on the scale and she opens up her app, she steps on the scale and it, they connect with Bluetooth and then you step on the scale and you see a live readout on your phone about what you currently weigh. It will then check your BMI and do all these other things as well and it will actually graph these things out over time. So it will do weight, BMI, body fat percentage, muscle uh, weight, muscle mass percentage, body water percentage, lean body mass in pounds, bone mass in pounds, protein percentage, visceral fat, BMR, metabolic age, all from this scale. Now, personally, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I think that all of these things are like unbelievably accurate, okay? Because it's not an expensive scale. It's not some high-end piece of equipment. But for me, the fact that I can pull this thing up and I can track month by month, what my weight has been every time I got on it, get a ballpark of my BMI, my BMR, these sorts of things, I think is really useful. I think my worst complaint with this thing has been that occasionally I will get on there, weigh myself, and it will not be able to get my body fat percentage and get those other things other than my weight. That's a little bit annoying. Step off of it, step back on, do it again, and it's probably going to work just fine. Just to round this thing out, it does also have a pet mode where you will basically weigh yourself, Step off, pick up your pet, step back on, and it will do the subtraction for you. That's kind of convenient. And there is also a heart rate measurement as well through your feet on this scale. I'm not sure how useful that's going to be to many people, but it is in fact there. Like I said, not a high-end piece of equipment, but as you can see, I paid $26.98 for it. Somewhere under $30 is about what I remember paying for this thing. So not particularly expensive either. It's gonna do the job just fine. So guys, there you go. That's what it's been like for me for the last, what, 18 months or something like that, running a pretty much exclusively wise branded smart home setup from cameras to outlets to vacuums to scales so forth and so on it's been pretty solid guys and the price has consistently been cheaper than a lot of the more well-known or higher in competitors while maintaining a pretty impressive level of consistency and performance. There are certainly some rough edges here and there that I've had to smooth out or just sort of learn to deal with but by and large I'm pretty happy with all my wise stuff and there's a reason why I continue to add to it. It's all just pretty good stuff for the money. So guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you have wise stuff? How do you feel about it? Add to this data set in the comments down below. Maybe you've had bad experiences, good experiences. Like I said, hit those comments and share that with everybody that might be down there looking into this stuff a little bit further. I will put affiliate links to Amazon to these different products in the description down below if you are interested in purchase, purchasing some of this stuff. You can click on one of those links and that will help support the channel if you do end up making a purchase after that. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more content like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friend.